a quick introduction of our next topic. And if you need to run to the bathroom, grab a quick sna a snack, go ahead and jump up, do what you need to do. Um, I'm gonna introduce Isabella here and then she's gonna take us through Move More. Um, so as we think about everything Karen said, Karen gave us a lot of information. So a personal challenge to all of us is write down what it is you're willing to commit to when it comes to eating smarter. It doesn't have to be completely 100% change. It can just be, all right, I'm gonna eat fruit with every meal, or I'm gonna eat vegetables before I eat anything else, or I'm gonna stop drinking anything but water, or I'm gonna walk 30 minutes a day. Whatever it is, commit to it, write it down. Write down what it is that you can do to eat smarter, to, to move more, and then focus on that throughout the week, as well as the other four areas. Um, just keep in mind what we talked about week one is committing and making progress. All right? That's what we each deserve, to, to continue to commit and make progress and become the better version of ourselves. And if we have the intention of, oh, I'll just kind of, I'll think about it, and then I'll just do better. Naturally, you know what we do? We do the same. I'm, I'm a creature of habit just like you guys. We all do that. So here's an opportunity to, to challenge ourselves this, this week with week two to get better. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce Isabella. She's going to be taking us through our Move More presentation. And if you haven't checked out any of Isabella's uh, stretching breaks or workout routines, Isabella is a group exercise instructor, and she's a highly passionate one at that. And she's going to be taking us through Moving More. So as she's taking us through the presentation, I want you to start to reflect on what it is that you can do to move more. What do you enjoy doing and what, what are the little, little advantages you can give yourself through ex exercise and physical activity? So with that being said, Isabella, when you're ready, go ahead and share your screen and then we'll kick it over to you. All right, whenever you're ready. Sorry, yes, thanks for unmuting me. Um, I am trying to share the screen. It's being a little slow, but... And by the Sorry. way, guys, a, a little um, clarification. Isabella goes directly from teaching a group exercise class and then jumps into our challenge session right away. <laughs> Not saying she looks like she just worked out. But, I do, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but because of the fact that you know she's she's basically going from one good thing to another. So with that, Isabella, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Okay. And quick uh, clarification, Isabella, can you make your screen fit to page so that oh, way? Oh yes, of course. I forget how I did that last time though. Um, okay, one second. Should be at the top where it says fit to page. Fit to page. I don't see it here today. Um, see the letter O in the word more? Just go straight up. More? Yeah, move more in the title. The letter O in more. And just uh -huh. follow it straight up. The first O? Oh, it says, it only says stop. I'm sorry, I have no idea. How, what if I made it smaller? Like, did that help? No, no, it's it's still cut off. Really? Maybe you're not seeing it on your end. On our end, we're seeing where it says fit to page in the top. <gasps> oh, I'm go. so sorry. Yay. Thank you, Sophia. You were totally <laughs> telling me and I just couldn't see it. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm not the best with Zoom. So or with Internet Explorer, I guess. But this is better. Yep. All right. Awesome. So move more. So obviously we're talking about physical activity, exercise. Size. Um, I know that you've probably been told a thousand times, but it is so important to stay physically active. Um, it's a very essential component of your health. Um, so physical activity refers to all body mo movements produced by the skeletal muscles, resulting in an increase of energy expenditure. But exercise is planned and structured movements um, that's done to purposely improve or maintain components of physical fitness. And um, it's like, like Karen said in her presentation, I believe, um, exercising is important, but um, if you don't have the right kind of diet, you, you need, you need both to maintain optimal health and 
to lose weight or to maintain your healthy weight, exercising alone is not enough, but it is important. Um, wait, something's in the chat and I can't see it. What does it say? Please click, oh, please on the message below. Oh, thanks. Okay, he was just telling me to exit that out. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Benefits of physical activity, there are lots. So reduce likelihood of coronary artery, artery disease, other cardiovascular diseases, um, physical activity, uh, specifically aerobic activity, which I'll um, kind of explain later, but it improves your cardiovascular fitness, um, being more physically, getting more physical activity in and being more aerobically fit will reduce the stress on your heart so your heart won't have to pump as hard every time it beats um to to and which is good because you don't want it to work too hard so physical activity will help with that reduces cancer risk um, likelihood of high blood pressure reduces your risk of falls um along the lines of that it improves your bone mass bone mass and reduces your risk of osteoporosis, so it strengthens your bones, muscles, and joints. Reduced risk of metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, um, improved weight management and immunity. And then it also improves your mental health, self-esteem a lot of times, um, increased energy, increased well-being, reduces your stress and anxiety, and improves your mood. So when you exercise, your body releases chemicals called endorphins that trigger a positive feeling in the body. So a lot of times um, when you, after you finish a workout, you'll feel that you are in a much better mood and have more energy when you started. All right. Guidelines for physical activity. So adults are advised to get in at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity or 700 or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity um, along with two or more days of strength training per week. Um, and that is just a guideline for adults over 18. Um, working with an Exercise specialist is also recommended um, as the most reliable way to begin an exercise program. So a lot, I think one of the most common excuses that I hear that, that you hear people talking about for why they don't get in enough physical activity or why they don't get in any at all is because they don't have the time. And that's totally a valid excuse and I'll talk about that later too, but there are 1,440 minutes in a day, and we're challenging you to set aside 30 minutes a day to get in physical activity. And um, I believe that 10,080 minutes in a week, I didn't do the mental math, I did that math earlier, but um, 10,080 minutes in a week, and the recommendation is that you get 150 minutes of exercise. So that sounds totally doable. That's only a small chunk of the time that you have. Um, so I'm challenging you to set aside a time of 30 minutes a day to get in some physical activity. And it doesn't have to be um, in a 30 minute chunk. So if you have trouble setting aside a 30 minute chunk of time, you could do two 15 minute workout sessions or three 10 minute. Um, that is the same. So if you don't have an actual 30 minute window, you can break it up and it works perfectly fine too. And any amount of exercise helps. So it's all, it's always better to get in a little bit um, than none at all. So other reasons why we, oh, also I wanted to say, well, we're talking about this again. I don't have enough time. Other tips that you can do with this is, combining physical activity that with things that are already part of your routine. So parking your car further from work, you have to, um, if you have a parking lot, I, if you park further or have to um, park on a floor where you have to take the stairs, I would recommend you do that because you have to get there anyways. Oops, I think I'm drawing on this and I didn't mean to. Sorry about that. Um, or taking the stairs instead of the elevator, that's also a good option. 
um, multitasking activities so that you can get in activity while also getting things done, such as making phone calls while going for a walk or reading a book while on the treadmill. Um, also, yeah, things, there's, there's so many things and maybe I'll compile a list and send those out, but I can think of a lot of things where you can kind of um, incorporate it into things that you already have to do as part of your daily routine. So um, the gym is intimidating, another um, valid excuse. Um, especially now, I feel like there are so many um, ways that you can get an exercise at home because of coronavirus closing gyms and everybody staying home, quarantining. Um, so there's so many workout videos online, lots of online programs, instructors doing virtual classes and workout apps that are free and have great resources. Um, I encourage you guys to try those out even once the gyms start back, op start opening back up because it is a, oftentimes more comfortable for people to work out in the comfort of their own home um, rather than in a gym setting because it can be, be intimidating for sure. Um, another tip for that is to find a workout buddy or friends to go with. Um, same thing here. If you get bored during exercising, I find doing it with other people um, makes it less boring. So finding a workout buddy and, um, or trying group exercise classes because the atmosphere of a group exercise class is supposed to be fun and the instructors are encouraging and lively and there are lots of different types of classes to try out. Um, along with that, if you don't know what to do, you could try those classes. I love group exercise classes. Obviously, I'm biased because I do teach them, but um, there are so many different types and the instructors will tell you what to do if you don't know what to do. Um, another tip for that one is to get a personal trainer or ask a friend who knows more about um, exercising to help you out. Um, and lastly, I'm too tired. That's also a very valid excuse, but I would recommend pushing through because exercising you'll find a lot of times it will increase your energy um your blood blood flow will increase and wake you up um a lot of times you'll find yourself feeling much more energized after you work out than before um also stretching yoga walking pilates um are all low impact low intensity workouts that i'd encourage you to do if you think that you're too tired um Stretching really is a good one because stretching can be relaxing, um, stress relieving, and is a very important aspect of physical fitness that many people forget to incorporate into their um, exercising schedule. So other tips for getting into exercise, choosing activities that are personally appropriate, convenient, and enjoyable. Starting slow, again, finding enjoyable activities. So you might have to do a little exploration, finding things that you like to do. Exercise is not one size fits all. Everybody likes to do different things. So finding what you like for you. Um, so starting slow and then progressing to more strenuous or vigor vigorous activities. Um, getting friends or family to be active with you and help keep you accountable. Um, accountability, definitely, if you get friends to work out with you, um, that will help with that. Um, and it's very encouraging too. Um, scheduling workout time into your schedule like you would with other commitments. So kind of what I said earlier about how we have 1,440 minutes in a day, if you just set aside 30 minutes, um, so planning it a certain time, setting an alarm on your phone at 7 p.m. that you're going to work out from 7.15 to 7.45 if you uh, – coordinate your other activities around that, um, you might find that you do have the time, the 30 minutes a day to, to do that. And I know a lot of us, we like to sit on our phone before bed for an hour or 30 minutes. And I challenge you to dedicate 30 of those minutes um, to do something else, take a walk, do a Pilates video or a stretching video. And then you um, are putting your minutes every day to good use. And then also it is not good to sit on your phone before you go to sleep. So that's a plus for putting that time into physical activity instead. And 
well, that was kind of a tangent. So um, another tip, ride your bike place instead of driving, park further from your destinations, um, and multitask, which I already touched on in the last slide too. So there are light physical activity that you can do moderate and vigorous. Um, light intensity activities require the least amount of effort and they don't provide the same health benefits as moderate physical vigorous activity, but they are still good to incorporate into your um, daily life. And um, these don't cause a noticeable change in breathing in your breathing heart rate like the um, more vigorous ones will. And, but I want to explain a MET is the amount of oxygen consumed while sitting at rest. So when you're just sitting doing nothing, that is a one MET activity. Um, that's like the baseline and light physical activity is less than three METs. So if this makes sense, two METs would be equal to two times the amount of oxygen consumed while you're sitting at rest. So the more intense the activity, the more oxygen, um, the more METs, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Moderate physical activity, three to six METs. Um, these activities require more oxygen consumption, which is why it's more METs. Um, and your heart beats faster than normal. You can talk but not sing while engaging in moder moderate physical activity. So there's this thing called the talk test where you can kind of test how intense the activity that you're doing is by the ability or by how well you can talk and maintain a conversation. So in mo moderate physical activities, you'll be able to carry a conversation, um, but you probably won't be able to sing a song. <laughs> and vigorous ac physical activity, you will have difficulty talking, maintaining conversations greater than or equal to six METs, and these require the highest amount of oxygen consumption to complete the activity. So these will really get your heart rate up. And I've included this chart here of at-home activities, um, just to kind of put into perspective that sweeping carpet, 3.3 um, mets, doing something, moving furniture, pushing around heavy objects, that'll be six mets, so vigorous activity. Um, playing with your dog, four mets, playing with your kids, five. So mets are really just um, a way, they're kind of like a, a measure of the intensity of um, describe using them to describe the intensity of physical activity. And here's some more activities, light, moderate, vigorous. You can kind of see those. I won't read through them all because of time, but yep. All right. Health related components of physical activity. So there's aerobic fitness, muscular fitness, which includes muscular strength and muscle, uh, muscular endurance, and then flexibility and body composition. So like I said earlier, aerobic fitness is the body's ability to take in and use oxygen to produce energy um, for prolonged activity. These activities make you breathe hard, increase your heart rate. Um, there's so many benefits, but just a couple of them, improved cardiovascular efficiency and health, increases your stroke volume and cardi cardiac output, which um, Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped from the ventricle during each contraction of the heart. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped each minute. Um, so the more aerobically fit you are, the lower resting heart rate you will have, which is good because um, it means the heart has to work less hard to pump the same amount of blood, which is ideal. Um, a lower heart rate implies more efficient heart function and it's a sign that your heart is working well so improved aerobic fitness is very important for your cardio cardiovascular health and also aerobic fitness is uh one of its benefits is improved body composition because it will help you burn fat all right, muscular fitness. So muscular strength refers to the amount of force a muscle of, or a group of muscles can generate in one contraction. And muscular endurance refers to a muscle's ability to exert force repeatedly without fatiguing or the ability to sustain a muscular contraction for a length of time. Um, so that is, you can see here, to improve muscular endurance, you're going to use lighter weights and more reps, while muscular strength 
you'd use heavier weights and fewer reps because it's the max amount of force your muscle can can generate in one contraction versus the the length or the endurance and benefits here um, improved performance and lots of activities um injury prevention improved body composition improved self-image so building muscular fitness will help you in a lot of your daily activities um flexibility the ability to joint bend joints and stretch muscles through a full range of motion the flexibility is really essential for injury prevention and joint mobility body composition describes the relative proportions of fat and lean tissues in the body not based on how much you weigh but how much of your weight is um, fat as opposed to muscle um, excessive body fat can cause musculoskeletal problems and increase your risk of heart disease and high blood pressure um, so this image on the right as you can see um, two people can weigh the same weight but can look different and have different compositions um, so different ratios of fat to muscle in their body so you can tell the girl on the left um, although she weighs the same as the girl on the right but she has a lower percentage of body fat and going along with that if you feel like you've been eating right and exercising and aren't losing weight I would say don't be discouraged because you might be gaining muscle weight and that's where the weight might be coming from. So don't be discouraged by the numbers on the scale. If you've been working out and you're like, why am I gaining weight? Well, muscle weighs more than fat. So it might be that you're gaining muscle. And second to last slide, I believe. Sorry, I'm going over time. Um, activity types. So there's aerobic or endurance activities, including running, swimming, biking, hiking, playing sports, dancing, stuff like that. Strength or resistance activities. Um, so these ones that first bullet um, kind of touches on improving your aerobic fitness. You'll want to do these activities um, to improve muscular endurance and um, muscular strength. This includes weightlifting, pushing heavy objects, using um, body weight for body weight exercises such as crunches, squats, lunges, push-ups, stuff like that. Flexibility activities include stretching and some forms of yoga, sometimes Pilates, stuff like that. And balance activities include Tai Chi, um, forms of yoga, Pilates as well. Um, dance, I find, too, can improve your balance and flexibility. And lastly, important reminders. Um, wear comfortable clothing and footwear while exercising. Keeping hydrated is definitely important. You're sweating, losing a lot of um, water. So keeping hydrated before, during, and after exercising. Um, stretching to prevent your body from getting injured already touched on that and kind of similar similarly warming up before you cooling before you start and cooling down when you finish um also paying attention to any pain or discomfort you might feel during working out um so there's normal workout discomfort and burning um but but there, then there's pain. So if you feel pain, you should stop before you risk injuring yourself or injuring yourself further if you've already sustained an injury. Um, and following your doctor's recommendations concerning medicines or other health conditions that might be of concern. Um, and also, lastly, well, I already touched on this in the beginning and I didn't include this, but exercising alone is not enough to maintain op optimal health. You'll want to eat a healthy diet too. So don't forget about all that important information that Karen taught us before this because combination of eating healthy and exercising will get you to where you want to be, um, allow you to achieve your health goals that you listed on your Google form and um, assisting you with your weight loss and weight goals. So yeah, both are important, but that is all. Let me stop sharing. That is physical activity for you guys. Hey, thank you, Isabella. <clears throat> Appreciate that. Any yeah. any questions, guys, for Isabella? Very good. Thanks. All right. So, guys, as we wrap up today, I know we we got about ten minutes left, and I want to stay stay close to our time. And uh, as always, we want to give everybody the time for additional support and questions and clarification as well. So, as we reflect on today's topics, both eating smarter and moving more. We, we don't need to stress ourselves out ab about it and think, well, I'm not exercising and I need to exercise daily. Or I, I'm far from plant-based and I need to go completely plant-based. 
remember the phrase progress. We have to, we have to commit to it and say we want to be better. We, that's the first thing. But then we have to say, what are some actionable steps I can take to, to make progress and head in that right direction? So what I'd like to challenge everybody right now is write it down, type it, say it to your husband or wife or whoever you're with and say, this week I'm going to blank. All right. Shout it out. If you want to put it in the chat, actually, that's a good idea. Let's all type it in the chat. Let's commit to it. Go in our chat box and type in this week what you're willing to commit to. There's a chat All right. So go to, go to the chat. Uh, you can message everybody and then just share what you're willing to do. And if anybody wants to share it aloud, let's do that now. But I can tell you for me this week, I really want to make sure I get my seven hours of sleep a night. Because what I was sharing with the group that I had in the breakout session was when I don't get enough sleep, that affects all the other areas. It makes me want to eat more and it makes me uh, handle my stress worse and it, it affects my relationships. And so I'm curious to see, okay, so I see some stuff coming in. I, people want to move, people want to sleep hey. more. They want to go to sleep the same time every night, move every day you know, and just be something as general as that. Just move, make a commitment to moving more, walking more, uh, 10,000 steps a day, uh, going to bed earlier, eating more beans and leg legumes. Uh, that's a great goal. Um, like Karen mentioned earlier, the longest lived people in the world, one of the key staples of all those populations is they all consume beans and they all consume beans on a daily basis. All right, so figure out how you can incorporate them with different meals. I see some here, eating more fiber, absolutely. That, that's Karen, one of Karen's favorite words, and same with all of us. Fiber is incredible. If you focus on fueling your body with fiber, amazing things will happen. And not only will you reduce your risk or you know, treat chronic diseases, but constipation gets better, your skin gets better, energy gets better, everything goes back to normal. Um, improving breakfast and starting off with, you know, good, good foods, more plants in your diet. Follow a workout guide. Uh, Vicki shared that, you know, starting a workout routine, something like hammer and chisel or P90X or all these great virtual workout programs. Committing to better exercise. Uh, do a fitness blender one, t one time a day. Okay, that's great. Just Figuring out how we can, you know, do different fitness activity or physical activity as well. Increase exercise, sleep plan. So there's a lot of great options here. And what I will say is stay the course. All right. And I'll give you an example. I put it in the email to everybody this morning. It took Michelangelo four years of laying on his back to paint the Sistine Chapel. All right. Four years of laying on his back. He didn't even want to do it at first. The, the Pope at the time had kind of cornered him and said, I'd like you to do this project. And it was a way smaller project than what it ended up being. And needless to say, it was years and years of his life. And he is the definition of commitment for all of us. What we have to understand is a healthy meal here, a walk here, a good conversation here, not drinking once a week. Things like that are good, good steps. But if that's it, and if we're not consistent and if we don't stay committed, we're never going to see the benefits. All right. So our challenge this week is to remember what we talked about last week and keep in mind that all the handouts and resources are available on our site. I want to share with that everybody, uh, share that with everybody really quick. So if it's pretty user friendly, if you're seeing my screen here, all you have to do is go into events and challenges, virtual challenge, Oops, virtual challenge. I gotta stop clicking week one, week two. So if you're clicking on week two, you'll see our weekly newsletter that the team put together and it has a challenge and a tip for each of our six core areas. But then aside from that, the calorie density video that Karen mentioned in her video, that's a, another registered dietitian, Jeff Novick, does a really great job of explaining that in, in a, lot, a lot of detail. And then the calorie density chart, the Eat Smarter presentation that Karen walked us through today, the Eating Smarter handout, but then also the Move More materials that uh, Isabella walked us through and the presentation and handout. Lastly, Isabella um, did put out there a workout challenge for everybody. So you can see here, 
that you can access the site and you will be able to tap into that resource and see a little bit of a workout challenge from now until next session. And then lastly, we put a whole food plant-based resources on here. So Sue, I know you mentioned it and some of your other uh, members mentioned it as well, having all kinds of recipes. So if you see here on the bottom, click on those links and they're free and available resources to help you. Okay, so this is something that is, it's there and it's ready for you to tap into it. And then lastly, Sophia just posted some more resources um, quickly while we were doing our session uh, of plant-based recipes. So if you click on this, it has all of our potluck recipes from an on-site challenge we did in January, as well as week-to-week -week suggestions of feature options for, from a week-to-week -week perspective. So when in doubt, tap into those resources and take advantage. But with that being said, I want to open it up for any final questions that anybody has. And also, if you want to stay on or have any more personal questions, you absolutely can stay on as well. So a round of applause for our speakers today, Karen and Isabella. Yay. Thank you, ladies. You did a wonderful job. And um, so I'll open it up. Any questions, comments, thoughts, if you want to drop now, certainly feel free as well. So remember, commit to make progress and commit to being a better version of yourself and a healthier version of yourself. Everybody have a good night. If you want to stay on or chat longer, we're here for you. We have a good night and a great week. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye -bye. Take care. Good night. Good night. Let's see.